Have police discovered a motive? CBS This Morning. The biggest names in politics. Whoa, that's news. Are we at a tipping point? Face the questions you want answered. Can you walk the American people through what happens next? Are you saying you did not ever hear of such a deal? Face the Nation with Margaret Brennan. Closing bell on Wall Street. It has been a volatile day for the markets as stocks continue to nosedive amid fears over the coronavirus. At one point today, the market was down more than 2,000 points. At another point, panic selling had halted trading as the price of oil crashed. For more on all of this, Alexis Christophorus joins me in the studio. She's an anchor and reporter for Yahoo Finance. Alexis, thank you so much for being with us. You know, can we expect this sell-off to continue? Of course, I guess if you knew the answer to that question, we'd all be we'd all be <laughs> on rich, a private right? island yeah. somewhere. Yeah. You know what? Unfortunately, probably yes mm -hmm. is the answer, Tanya, because there are just too many question marks right now, too many unknowns regarding not only the coronavirus, but now the big slide we saw in oil. Oil prices had their biggest one-day slide since the Persian Gulf War of 1991. When the market opened this morning, it really was a, a, a knockout punch, a, a two-time punch for investors, because not only are they dealing with the coronavirus, but now they're dealing with a crisis in the oil market. So until we start to get some sort of clarity on either one of those issues, mm -hmm. there's really not a compelling reason to jump back well, in. Well, tell us about that oil crisis. That was not coronavirus related. No, well, oil was already under pressure because the virus had really stifled demand for mm -hmm. oil around the world. And then over the weekend was an OPEC meeting and Saudi Arabia said, listen, why don't we all cut oil production to uh, to boost prices and Russia was not going to play along. Interesting. So now there is this uh, this price war. Basically, Saudi Arabia has instigated a price war with Russia. No one saw this coming, and it was another huge hiccup for investors so today. So just glutted the market with oil now. And exactly. It's, so it's very cheap. All right, so let's go to this sort of panic selling that happened, yeah. and, and the market's closed after the market lost about 7%, right? Tell us how that works. Why did the markets then not halt trading later in the day when it saw a sell-off of over 8%? Right, good question. So the first few minutes of trading, all three major market indexes were down more than 7 percent. And so the first circuit breaker is what they call it was was put into effect that halted trading for 15 minutes. When trading came back up, you'd have to wait for the market to come down another 13 percent before we uh, halted for another 15 minutes. And then if the market falls 20 percent from its close the previous day, the stock market closes down for trading. And why they do this is they want investors to take a moment, take a breath, uh, you know, get themselves together and hopefully cooler heads would prevail. And in fact, although we, we are finishing the day down a lot, cooler heads did prevail because when we started trading again, markets did not continue the sell off. They sort of hung around that area of off about 7%. Right. Still, we're seeing significant one day losses, correct? What would you say, especially to elderly people who have retirement around the corner right. and they're seeing their investments lose so much value in just a few days? What would you say to those people? Yeah, it's really scary, right? When you start seeing numbers like these, you know, the Dow down 2,000 points. The thing is, if your time horizon is a long one, if you don't need your money for the next three or more years, this really is, as hard as it is to, to conceive, a huge buying opportunity. Maybe you don't want to go buying right now because we haven't been done with all the selling, mm -hmm. but companies like Amazon and Facebook and Apple are at huge discounts right now after this big market sell-off. So there is opportunity. The market will rebound at some point, and if you're in the market, you'll enjoy that. If, though, however, you need your money for retirement, somebody's going to college soon, and you need to tap that money, you want to get that money off the table, hopefully it's already off the table, into either treasury bonds, you're not making a lot of money there, but at least it's safer, or guess what, Tanya, good old-fashioned cash. There's nothing wrong with sitting on the sidelines, letting it all play out, and then jumping in when you see opportunity. So if you're really, really worried and you need your money right away, maybe take it out, sit on it for a little bit, then put it back in if things calm down. I would I would think that that yeah. would be the way you'd want to go to sort yeah. of give yourself some peace of mind. Right, right. Okay, so what should the Federal Reserve be doing about this? Can We saw them, you know, cut interest rates. Can yeah. we see them do that again? We got that emergency rate cut last yeah. week. That actually rattled the markets instead of actually mm. calming things down. It was unexpected, right? It was, and so some were thinking, uh-oh, maybe things are worse than we thought. What does mm -hmm. the Fed know that we don't? Mm -hmm. Now, we have another Fed meeting March 18th. Many on Wall Street are predicting another rate cut of about half a percent there, and then possibly another rate cut of another half a percent in April. That would bring the Fed funds rate, is what they call it, between zero and a quarter percent, which means the Fed cannot do a lot at this point to help this market, to help the oil market, who can governments 
around the world. They need to start coming together and come up with a financial bailout package for the economy. So they need to start flooding certain industries with money to help them out? Is right. that what needs and, to happen? And in fact, I believe President Trump's going to be meeting with some Wall Street executives and some of his own uh, folks within the cabinet tonight and throughout the week to come up with some sort of a package, which would include tax credits. They mm -hmm. may actually wind up cutting the payroll tax to help ease things for companies. They may extend sick paid leave for people who are out uh, because they are ill and at, and at home. Uh, we could see a tax cut for the middle class. I mean, there are a number of things they can do, including something called helicopter money, which I think would be a last resort. And that's when the government actually deposits money into your checking account wow. and says, here's some money, go out and spend it. Of course, the problem with that is Who's going to go out and spend it? Yeah. So and many people are quarantined. Larry Kudlow is not a fan of that sort of thing. Right. I mean, it is a last, mm -hmm. you know, resort type mm -hmm. of situation, but it is it is a tool they have. Now, have we ever seen this kind of sell-off in market history due to a virus? That's what makes this so different. You know, we, we've known each other for a long yes. time. I've been covering the market since the early 90s. And what makes this very different is we have two things happening simultaneously, a health crisis and now a market crisis. And, and it usually don't have to deal with both. I mean, when you think back to the 2008 financial crisis, that was because the mortgage market had collapsed. It was financial in nature. This is health, uh, uh, the, the nature of this is different. It regards our health. And, and there are human lives at stake here as well. So it's very different this time around. The fear seems to be driving a lot of it, though. I mean, or, or the uncertainty around the fear comes first. Then right. there are a lot of unknowns. And I, I guess markets don't respond well to either of those things. No, no, no. Market likes clarity, right? Mm -hmm. And so we've got a lot. Today, I was talking to a lot of traders who said this was definitely panic selling. And what starts mm -hmm. to happen is selling begets more selling. And in many ways, it's very contagious. Right. Which is why we don't believe that the selling is quite done yet. I think we should all buckle up because it's probably going to be a rough ride, if not for the rest of the week, possibly even the rest of the month. But if cooler heads prevail, you know, the sort of the Warren Buffetts of the investment sure. world, could there be great opportunity here? Almost absolutely, because at some point we're going to find a bottom. And when we do, everyone I'm talking to, market strategists, floor traders are saying, the bounce back is going to be sharp. Just as dramatic as we saw the fall down, the, the, the rise up will mm -hmm. be dramatic as well. As people rush in, there's going to be a lot of money on the sidelines. Where are you going to put it to work? You're going to go out there and bargain hunt for a the lot key, of the companies that were expensive just a few right. weeks ago. But isn't the key, Alexis, in the timing? Like, how do you know when you're when the market yeah. is nearing the bottom, Don't right? time the market. Don't try to time yeah. the market. You know, it's it's a very individual thing. What, what kind of risk are you willing to take for yourself? Mm -hmm. What's going to allow you to sleep better at night? So what are the signs for the average investor that it's time to jump back in? Well, you know, we have to see this still flesh out. We, we, we will probably still see more days of, of selling. But I think when you start to see the market closing at a better level than where it started, like, for instance, today, we're down, I think it's almost 7 percent, about where we started the day. When we can rally back a little bit, mm -hmm. it shows that people towards the end of the day felt comfortable getting back in and holding those stocks overnight. And right. I think that's a sign that at least there's some optimism yes. in the market. You know, the flu season will naturally wrap up and yeah. come to an end. And so cases of coronavirus, we think, we hope, yes. we hope will probably sort of naturally start to die down. And that could boost the market when that starts Most to happen. Once we start getting our, when, when we start to get our arms around the virus and now mm -hmm. also this big plunge in oil, when we start to see governments taking uh, concerted efforts to fix things, mm -hmm. then I think there's going to be confidence right now there's a huge confidence crisis in yeah. the stock market. But, but do most economists right now believe that the underlying, you know, indicators of the economy are healthy? They are for now. Look at the jobs report. The mm -hmm. most recent jobs report we got, unemployment still at a 50-year low. <laughs> We added more than 200,000 jobs last month. Okay. So the fundamentals of this economy were very strong going into this crisis, and that's a good thing. Yes. We're coming from a position of strength. So one would have to think that if this is somewhat short-lived, people will get back out, start spending. I mean, look, gas prices are going to be super low. Airfares are going to be super low. Now we just need to have the virus pass so people can get back to their lives. Yeah, my friend just told me she bought a ticket to, uh, to Antigua for $130.